here because the outside world rejects you. All right, listen, we're going to keep this intro short. In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at all the major versions of the Ninja Turtles that have ever come out of the movies, the television shows, and the comics. So basically over the whole landscape, at least how we see it here, these are the ones we think that you should know about that'll give you a good understanding of everything Turtles. Now there is a lot to cover, so we're not going to dive in too deep, just brief explanations of each one. Keep it as super clear as possible. That way, no matter if you're a beginner Turtles fan or a super Turtles fan, you'll know exactly what we're talking about and you'll know a little more about all the different versions of the turtles that you see floating around on the internet i just think it's some great stuff to know as a turtle fan hopefully this video can do that for you and for me personally i just like stepping back and looking at everything that the turtles have accomplished it has such a long and ongoing history and it's just a testament to how everlasting the turtles are now for more in-depth videos covering the different events and ideas for all these turtles go check out my playlist section here on the channel after the video we have different videos talking about all these different turtles but for now let's waste no time because we're going to take a look at every major version of the Ninja Turtles that's ever existed. All right, so let's start off where it all began, the Mirage Comics Turtles. These began coming out in 1984, and it's the original black and white comics, the ones that Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird began, where all the turtles wear the red bandanas, so they didn't have their individual colors yet. The first run of these comics was 62 issues, and it's referred to as Volume 1. It also includes a handful of one-shots that introduced each turtle at the beginning, so Raphael got his own one-shot, and so on. Now, the first chunk of this 62 comic book run is a cohesive story that introduced the world to many of the characters that would become staples of the franchise. Then the middle chunk of this 62 issue run is referred to as the guest era. They would have different artists and storytellers that would come in and do their own thing with the turtles, not really staying in line with the main storyline. But then the third closing chunk of this 62 issue run went back to Eastman and Laird who closed it out with the epic multi-part storyline called City at War. So that was it. The first run was complete, 62 issues. And by the way, while these were coming out, there there was another comic called Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that came out alongside these. These also told stories in this Mirage continuity, although it was only seven issues, but still they're pretty important. Now it was 1993 when volume one of the main title finished, but shortly after, also in 1993, volume two of the Mirage Comics Turtles began, and now they were in full color. This continued the story of these same turtles, although the run only lasted 13 issues. Wikipedia says something about a flood at Mirage Studios cutting this one short, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Their story continued for 13 issues and then it ended in 1995. Then in 1996, the Turtles went back to black and white with volume three, although they were now being published by Image Comics and no longer Mirage. Now this is where it gets a little confusing. Originally, it was intended that these were the same Turtles as the Mirage Turtles we just spoke of, but as time went on, this turned out not to be the case. So we'll come back to this volume three Image Comics Turtles a little later, since they're not really the Mirage Turtles. Now the reason those Turtles didn't end up being the same turtles as the Mirage Turtles is because in 2001, Mirage began to make Ninja Turtle comics again. And this run is known as Volume 4, this time in black and white yet again, and elements in those stories contradicted the things that happened in the Volume 3 Image comics. So it technically goes Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 4 when it comes to these Mirage Turtles continuity. Now, Volume 4 also had a Tales of the TMNT comic also running alongside it, like how the original 1984 comics did. These stories were also also part of that same universe. These are referred to as Tales of the TMNT Volume 2, since it was the second time they did a Tales of the TMNT. But yeah, that's probably the most basic layout of the Mirage Ninja Turtles. There's additional like side stories and things like that, but this is the main chunk of it. Now, interestingly enough, the Mirage Turtles were the ones that started it all, even before the original cartoon, but their stories from Volume 4 were never completed. Although, correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments, I believe in 2009, when Laird sold the rights to the Ninja Turtles, he kept the right to keep making these Mirage Turtles if he ever decided he wanted to, like a certain amount of issues per year or something like that. And he did do one in 2010, and then another in 2014, but there hasn't been anything since then. I feel like he would have done another one by now, but who knows, let me know down below in the comments what you think. Okay. 
Okay, let's be honest. These ones are probably the most iconic version of the turtles that have ever come out. These are the ones that still to this day are plastered on merchandise as far as the eye can see. This is the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, also referred to as the 1987 show or the Fred Wolf show as it was produced by Fred Wolf Films. Now for newcomers, obviously this is not connected with the Mirage Turtles we just spoke of. This was its own thing. The turtles wear their individual colors here that we're all familiar with. The show lasted 10 seasons with the final three seasons changing the turtle designs a little bit. They get this darker, edgier look. Fans refer to this period as the red sky seasons, as the sky in the opening sequence of the show changes from a regular sky to a red sky instead. The Japanese dub of this show was the one that got the two episode anime OVA that you see sometimes online. That had the turtles transform into these guys, which was pretty crazy. It also had a manga that led into it. But yeah, not much else to say here. The legendary 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon lasted a whopping 10 seasons and took the world by storm. In 1988, another Turtles comic started. These turtles were published by Archie Comics and are often referred to as the Archie Comics or the Archie Turtles. At first, these issues just seemed to be adaptations of the episodes of the 1987 cartoon. But after the first few books, it started doing its own thing and became its own continuity, with stories being a little bit more deeper and serious compared to the 1987 cartoon. There's actually some pretty wild stuff that happens in these. The main title of these comics ran for 72 issues and ended in 1995. A pretty good run that I feel like not a lot of people really know about. Okay, so next let's talk about the turtles on the big screen. We all know these turtles. This is the 90s Ninja Turtles Trilogy Turtles, or the 1990 Turtles as a lot of people refer to them as. These were the ones that looked amazing in that first 1990 movie. It gave everyone a super faithful adaptation of the turtles, and it's just a classic that can be rewatched over and over. The second movie, Secret of the Ooze, which came out in 1991, changes the faces of the turtles a little bit, and they don't look as serious, and the movie is not as dark tonally, but it's still a fun follow up. And the turtles do look somewhat similar to how they did in that first movie. Overall, pretty good. Then there was the third movie in the trilogy, the 1993 film Ninja Turtles 3, and it changed how the turtles looked pretty drastically. The tone of this one isn't similar to the other two films, and back in the day, people ripped on this one pretty hard. But now it's actually become a pretty nostalgic film. And just the fact that it still had actors and martial artists in these big rubber suits has made this movie grow on me in comparison to other live action turtles we got after. Okay, so these turtles are pretty much us lumping together all the different live action turtles that had all these musical specials throughout the early 90s. This was a big thing back then, but most of them were really bad, like the Star Wars holiday special style. This is where most of the bizarre moment in Ninja Turtles history from the 90s comes from. Do you sometimes wish that April was a turtle? Oprah, I've been trying to talk her into an interspecies relationships for months now. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Chill, man. And she won't do it. Huh? Most of these are literally the exact same turtle suits when it comes to these. So it's almost like these turtles have their own absolutely insane continuity. Let's briefly run through them. It started in 1990 with the concert turtles. These turtles went on tour in their Coming Out of the Shells tour that also premiered on pay-per-view. There's a spin-off of this tour called the Getting Down in Your Town tour that also used the same turtles. Now turtles very similar to this also appeared in a 1992 special commissioned by the United States Bureau of Land Management, The Mystery of the Cliffs. And man, that one is really strange. We'll have to break that down further at some point. Next, turtles very similar to this appeared in the 1994 Christmas special titled We Wish You a Turtle Christmas. It's a musical, it's super cringe, I did a whole video on it. Also in 1994, they appeared in another musical special called Turtle Tunes, and it's just as bad as the Christmas special. So remember earlier how we said that the Volume 3 Image Comics ended up becoming its own thing because the Volume 4 Mirage Comics contradicted it? So yeah, these are known as the Image Comics Turtles, and they started in 1996 and were in black and white as we discussed earlier. Now this told some pretty dark stories with the turtles getting disfigured and things like that. It's a fascinating run that lasted 23 issues before it was canceled and the story was never completed until a couple years ago when they re-released them in color 
color and brought the original team together to complete the story, with three new issues. These re-releases got the name Urban Legends, and I believe, unless I'm mistaken, the way they ended it kind of leaves it up to interpretation if they're connected to the Mirage Turtles. They got rid of some of those contradictions that we spoke of, and I think by giving it the name Urban Legends, it's supposed to leave you with the thought of, maybe this did happen, maybe it didn't. But yeah, let me know down below in the comments what you think. In 1997, the Turtles had another outing in live action, this time in the form of a television show. The show was titled Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation, dropping the Teenage Mutant part. And this show only lasted one season, and from what I remember, it wasn't received very well. It's very silly, but not in a charming way. It's very stiff, very cheesy, and just didn't flow that well. This was the show that introduced the female turtle, Venus, and that also had the Turtles finally meet the Power Rangers for the first time. It is said that this show was going to get a second season, but that didn't end up being the case. Although there is concept art floating around out there, with Casey Jones being one of the new characters that they would have introduced. In 2003, the second big Ninja Turtles cartoon finally came out. People usually refer to this one as TMNT 2003, or the 4Kids TV TMNT as that's what it was coming out on. This one was a little bit more serious and serialized when compared to the 1987 cartoon. The series ran for seven seasons, with seasons one through five being under the regular Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles title. Season six got the title Ninja Turtles Fast Forward, and season seven, which finally ended the show in 2009, was called Ninja Turtles Back to the Sewers. The first five seasons designs of the turtles is pretty consistent and in my opinion it's where they look the best the turtles look darker and stronger but just like with the title of this show the designs of the turtles changed as the titles changed season six fast forward the turtles look like this and then in season seven the back to the sewer season the turtles ended up looking like this which i prefer the way they started off instead now at around the end of this version of the turtles they ended up getting a made for tv movie where different versions of the ninja turtles that were out around that time all met this was the the Turtles Forever movie, and it's pretty great. Now overall, from what I see, this version of the Turtles is admired by most fans, although the consensus seems to be that the last two seasons are not as good as the first five. Now let's talk about the turtles from the 2007 movie TMNT. These turtles are usually referred to as TMNT 2007, and this was another major version of the turtles who unfortunately had a very short run with just the one theatrical film and a handful of prequel comics that came out before the film's release. The film was 3D animated, which was the first time the turtles had come out that way, but that's all there was, just the one movie. Although there are these images of what the sequel could have been that someone had pitched at one point, but nothing ever came of it. It shows my Michelangelo holding his demutated brothers and father with Shredder overlooking him. I did a whole video on this, go check it out. But yeah, these turtles were pretty good. They were fun, yet had their dark elements as well, and had pretty cool turtle designs. I don't remember the hype being as big as it was for the 1990 movies, but from what I can tell, the fans do appreciate this one. Now, after 2009, Nickelodeon bought the Ninja Turtles, and so they partnered with IDW Publishing and started making their own new Ninja Turtles comic, simply titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the one that everyone refers to as the IDW Ninja Turtles. This comic reinvented the Turtles' origin and is actually really good. This whole version of the Turtles is just great, at least in my opinion. It's mature, the action is fun, and these comics are still going on to this day. A long, unbroken, continuous story that has gone past 100 issues, and everything Makes sense. They've really done a good job of making this an amalgam of all the different versions of the turtles that have ever existed. But yeah, every month a new one comes out and they keep going. Now, when looking online, on some images you may see them wearing all red bandanas, similar to how the original Mirage Turtles did, and the Image Comics Turtles as well. And in other images online, you may see these IDW turtles with the regular Ninja Turtles colors that we're all familiar with. Now, that's because these turtles start off wearing the all red bandanas and eventually get their own colors. I would absolutely recommend checking this one out if you're a Turtles fan, specifically because it's still going on. So that way, once you catch up, you can follow along every month, which is pretty cool. Teenage 
Now naturally, after the Nickelodeon buyout, they were going to launch a new cartoon. In 2012, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, although people refer to it as TMNT 2012, or the Nick Turtles. This show was 3D animated and lasted five seasons, with the final season being called Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The final season took the turtles on Elseworld type stories, and I don't believe a lot of it is in continuity with the rest of the show, just the series of what ifs. Although there has been some debate on some of the episodes, but that's a topic for a different video. The design style for these turtles was very different than anything we had ever gotten before, and for me it caused me to shy away from it for a while. Although once I watched it, I saw why so many people were enjoying it. It's such a smooth watch, and for me it's the voice actors that push it over the top. They're very enjoyable to hear, and the way they bounce off each other sounds so natural. Good dialogue too. In 2014, we got our next live action Turtles movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, although people refer to these as the Bay Turtles, as Michael Bay was the producer on the films. I've also seen this version of the Turtles referred to as TMNT 2014 or 2016 if we're talking about the sequel. These were the Turtles that you probably remember hearing would be Alien Ninja Turtles. Now this didn't end up being the case, thank goodness, but the backlash of that rumor had done its damage. Now this was live action, but instead of having the martial artist in rubber suits, like the old movies had, this had the actors in motion capture suits, and animated them later, which gave us interesting designs. Now this movie ended up getting a sequel in 2016 called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Fans seemed to prefer this one over the 2014 one, but it didn't make as much money. Overall, interest in this new live action version of the Turtles wasn't all that great, like it had been for the original live action movies, and so it didn't get a third movie. Now that's not to say this version of the Turtles doesn't have fans, a lot of people grew up on these, and it's their version version of the turtles, and they like it. I see them all the time online, but in my opinion, these turtles are just missing that broad appeal that gets everyone on board. In 2018, we got a new Ninja Turtles cartoon, not long after the last cartoon had ended by the way. This show was called Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, although everyone calls them the Rise Turtles. This would portray the turtles a little younger and a little earlier in their adventures, with Raphael being the leader before Leo eventually took over. These turtles would not wield their traditional weapons, and instead use mystic weapons that we hadn't seen before. Each weapon would allow each turtle to have his own powers and special moves that they could do. The show had 15 minute episodes episodes, so not the usual 30 minute episodes that had been the norm up until this point. Although every once in a while, a 30 minute episode would happen if it was the season finale or a big event, and in my opinion, those were the better episodes. The show had two seasons, with the show's final episode in 2020 turning Leonardo into the leader finally. In 2022, these Rise Turtles would get a movie on Netflix, and this movie stepped it up a couple notches and was really good quality. I'd recommend checking this one out even if you weren't into this version of the Turtles. In 2019, we got an unexpected surprise, and that was the Batman vs. Ninja Turtles animated movie. This 2D animated movie is an absolute love letter to all Turtles fans, and is personally one of my favorite Ninja Turtles things that we've gotten ever. This movie had Nickelodeon and Warner Brothers team up, which makes sense to bring the two properties together, Batman and the Turtles. The movie is serious and funny and full of Easter eggs. Any Turtle fan should check this out if you haven't already. Now, this movie did have a post credit sequence that set up a follow-up, but I don't think we're ever going to get that. Unless I'm mistaken, I feel like the leadership personnel at both parties has changed a lot since this movie came out. And now with everyone having their own streaming platforms and stuff like that, I don't know if we'll get a crossover like that ever again. It's a shame because these turtles are really cool and it would have been awesome to get a trilogy of them this way, the way the comic book crossover had. Anyways, 2019, Batman vs. the Ninja Turtles, just one movie, go check it out. In 2020, we got one of the most legendary tales in Ninja Turtles history called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin. This comic showed us a new world in which one of the turtles remained. The rest of his family had been killed and now he seeked vengeance. 
This story was originally supposed to be set in the Mirage Ninja Turtles universe, the very first one we talked about at the beginning of the video. From what I've seen in some interviews, this was eventually changed, and ended up being its own version of the Ninja Turtles. It was a five issue comic series that just kept selling out and selling out. They kept having to do reprints to meet demand. This did so well that they continued to tell stories in this universe, but now following a new team of Ninja Turtles, the ones that were shown at the end of the original Last Ronin book. The names of this new team of Ninja Turtles in this Ronin universe are Uno, Moja, Odin, and Yi, two brothers and two sisters. These new turtles will be going on new adventures in 2024, under the title Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin 2 Re-Evolution. Make sure to check out all our videos on Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin to get caught up on all this. It's very fascinating. Okay, so here we are at the end, at the current new on-screen version of the Ninja Turtles, as of the time of this recording. And these turtles are the turtles from the 3D animated theatrical film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This is the one produced by Seth Rogen's Point Grey Pictures. This is a complete reboot of the TMNT. Now, spoiler warning for the film, but this movie had the Ninja Turtles face off against the new villain we had never seen before, named Superfly. By the end of the film, the turtles are accepted by the public, and so the movie leaves off with the Ninja Turtles now being able to attend the public school. So yeah, a massive change from any previous version of the Ninja Turtles that we've discussed. Now, a new television series called Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was announced right after this film, Mutant Mayhem, came out. And it looks like this series will follow the adventures of these Mutant Mayhem Ninja Turtles as they attend school. Also, it has been revealed that this show will be 2D animated instead of 3D animated, which was the case in the movie. Now, two seasons were announced of this new series, and also announced was a sequel to Mutant Mayhem, which will be hitting theaters sometime in the future. This film will have the turtles go up against their arch nemesis, the Shredder. So yeah, a lot to look forward to with these new turtles. Let's see what the future holds. Anyways, it's such a fascinating property. It's fun, it's serious, it's everlasting, as you can see from all these different versions we just listed. But hey, let me know down below, did any of these turtles stick out to you? Is there some you didn't know about that maybe you're like, hey, I'm gonna look into that now. But that's it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Hit subscribe, follow on all the socials. Links are down below in the description, and I will see you guys in a little bit with another video. Take care.